Hi there, I'm Jordan Smith from Rapido Trains Inc. And today I'm back at the Railview Historical Society and we're looking at our F59 PH diesels in HO along with our bi-level commuter cars. I've got uh, both the F59 PH and our uh, commuter cars painted up by our own Dan Darnell. Just to give you a brief history of these models, uh, Go purchased these used from BC Rail in 1980. Originally, BC Rail had purchased them for use on a failed scheme to run down to Seattle over the Burlington Northern. That's why they're green. Now, some of the features you can get on the Go Buy levels include automatic transmission, a 305 V8 engine or an optional 350. There is also a cassette deck or optional 8-track player if you're from that era. Now, hold on a second. I seem to be getting a call, but this isn't a call-in show. Hello? Jordan, are you doing the video right now about the bi-level cars? Yeah, that's what I've been talking about the last two minutes. Are you talking about the bi-level cars or your own car project? Maybe I'll just get you to talk about these cars. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Alright, sure thing. Throughout Europe in the 60s and 70s, bi-level commuter cars were becoming increasingly more common, but the trend had not yet landed in North America save for designs like the Bud High Level cars used by Santa Fe and the gallery cars operated in the Chicago area. Introduce Hawker Sidley Canada, along with DeFasco and the Urban Transportation Development Corporation, otherwise known as UTDC, who worked with a relatively new commuter startup in the Toronto, Ontario area, still known today as Go Transit. These first true bi-level commuter cars were built between 1976 and 1978, and completely changed the landscape of commuter operations across North America. However, it took almost a decade for the design to reach the United States. The first system to use the bi-level design was Miami's tri-rail system starting in 1989. In 1992, the Los Angeles area introduced Metrolink commuter operations on the West Coast. This has then spurred further startup commuter systems to utilize the bi-level design, which now includes over 14 agencies across North America and almost 1,500 cars being built to date, all based on that original design introduced by Hawker Sidley Canada. Now then, enough jibber-jabber about the real thing. Let's look at the models. These models have been designed from original blueprints and include all the unique characteristics of these cars, right down to the 1,000-inch radius curved body sides. Series 1 and Series 2 cars are known for their rivets, and I found myself becoming a true rivet counter in designing these cars. Thankfully, the welded car bodies of the Series 3 and 4 models were much easier to design, but still have a few rivets themselves. These pre-production samples have most of the rivets done, but there's still a few yet to add once we're happy with the tooling. One of the biggest issues we've heard about other models is how poorly they roll. This is a huge challenge for any model that has inside bearing trucks, as there's no way to use needlepoint axles which offer the least amount of resistance. So, we've used roller bearings inside the trucks to make sure that these cars can roll and your motive power can pull a respectable train length. Oh, not only that, these cars come with proper flange size on the wheels for improved reliability too. Now, the minimum radius is 22 inches and these cars will work better on a larger radius curve. We tried to get it to work on an 18 inch radius curve, however, because of the longer wheelbase of the trucks, their location close to the ends of the car, as well as the fixed side skirts, this just wasn't possible. Even at 22 inches, we're pushing the limits. Now, they may be low to the ground, but these cars still have an underbody and we're still Rapido. So we've included various pipes, tanks, and crossmember detail to give these cars the true Rapido touch. Back on the roof, we've got separately applied grab irons, the correct five chime horn, two different types of bell, either mechanical or electronic, optional strobe lights, and see-through grills showing the rooftop AC fan detail as well. Speaking of see-through grills, take a look at those door steps. We're also including separate non-illuminated door light parts should you wish to update the look of your model. Speaking of the windshields, we're making multiple versions of the cab cars too, all dependent on the prototype, both with and without the conductor's window. Looking on the inside, we've got a full interior of seats, grab rails, stairs, and even those pesky and somewhat cramped washrooms. Don't like the cramped washroom? No problem. Go for one of the newer car styles that has an accessible washroom on the lower level. We've got two different arrangements of seats on the upper level as early coaches feature door guard controls upstairs. We're also including different interiors on the intermediate level on the ends of the cab cars depending on if there's an old small cab or the newer full width cab. Now, a lot of people have asked us about lighting. All cars will feature 
our known flicker-free track parrot lighting throughout on all levels, not just one lighting board. There will be multiple lighting boards in each of these cars, all controlled by the Rapido lighter magnetic wand. For the cab cars, these will have basic light functions controlled by the lighter as well. Marker lights, headlights, and ditch lights, as well as the number boards. Want to take it one step further? All cab cars will come with a 21-pin DCC plug and contacts for you to install a speaker of your choosing. This will allow full control of the headlights, ditch lights, which you can make flash, number boards, red marker lights, and strobe lights as well. And if you're wondering about additional schemes and models, not to worry. We've designed this project to have legs and we hope the sales from this first run will spur that push. We have plans for additional model variants, new road names, different paint schemes on existing road names, and a whole lot more. That pretty well sums it up, Jordan. All right, thanks so much, Josh, for giving us a rundown on all the details and features of our all-new bi-level commuter cars. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we uh, sign off today? Hey, Jeremy here. So, originally, we were in that video off with Josh going on a diatribe about Toronto fans because he's one of those devoted Habs fans. But as director, I made an executive decision to censor that out because we've suffered enough. So don't worry, Toronto fans. I got your back. We'll get some more touchdowns next year. Now don't forget the order deadlines for both our all new F59 PH and bi-level commuter cars is coming on June the 15th, 2021. Make sure you see your dealer or order direct at rapidotrains.com. Uh, now in terms of the F59s, the sales have overall improved quite a bit, but we're still a bit short on the as delivered Metrolink and later ribbon Metrolink paint schemes. So please, like I said, see your dealer, get your orders in, and let's make all of these uh, locomotives a reality. So thanks once again for joining me. Have a great day. Jason. Hello, you're on camera right now. What? You're on camera right now, being recorded. What's up? Oh, sorry. Um, are you at the... I'm going to the office. Is there milk? No. Uh, there might be in your fridge, but it's probably from June no, of last year. Do me a favor. Get some long life next time you're there and put it, put it in the office, okay? In your fridge, so that... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually, I'm just at Railview right now. I'm across the street. We're, we're filming. Literally, okay, okay. You're, you're being recorded, so... Well, I'm coming over there now to uh, pick up some resistors, so I'll, I'll, I'll make you a bit. Okay. All right, okay. see you soon. Bye. And wants, there's our outtake. He, he wants milk. <laughs> we'll get an outtake at the end of the boss asking you to bring home milk. Oh, just bloopers. That was perfect timing. <laughs>